I boasted among men that I had known you. They see your pictures in all works of mine. They come and ask me, who is he? I know not how to answer them. I say, indeed, I cannot tell. They blame me and they go away in scorn. And you sit there smiling. I put my tales of you into lasting songs. The secret gushes out from my heart. They come and ask me, tell me all your meanings. I know not how to answer them. I say, ah, who knows what they mean? They smile and go away in utter scorn. And you sit there smiling. Rabindranath Tagore, 1910.
In the traditional view, a person is free. He is autonomous in the sense that his behavior is uncaused. That view, together with its associated practices, must be re-examined when a scientific analysis reveals unexpected controlling relations between behavior and environment. By questioning the control exercised by autonomous man and demonstrating the control exercised by the environment, a science of behavior also seems to question dignity or worth. A person is responsible for his behavior, not only in the sense that he may be justly blamed or punished when he behaves badly, but also in the sense that he is to be given credit and admired for his achievements. A scientific analysis shifts the credit as well as the blame to the environment, and traditional practices can then no longer be justified. These are sweeping changes and those who are committed to traditional theories and practices naturally resist them. As the emphasis shifts to the environment, the individual seems to be exposed to a new kind of danger. Who is to construct the controlling environment, and to what end? Autonomous man presumably controls himself in accordance with a built-in set of values. He works for what he finds good. But what will the putative controller find good? And will it be good for those he controls? Answers to questions of this sort are said, of course, to call for value judgments. B.F. Skinner, 1971.